plans for a, for Team Fortress and things. So, um, like I say, that's kind of down the road a long way, but there is this opportunity at some point where we could we could add a substantial theme park component to our sandbox without necessarily requiring our team to develop that content. It could be something that gets developed by, by the community. All right, so I have a point of clarification then. I thought that the Crystal Sp or the Emerald Spire somehow was going to fit into Pathfinder Online. Was that just like a standalone supplement that you got for backing the kick find? Yeah, the kind of yes and no. Uh, okay. So the Emerald Spire, uh, the Emerald Spire is a uh, Pathfinder tabletop super dungeon, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it's a uh, it's being designed as a tabletop product. So okay. all the people that worked on it, you know, they designed a tabletop adventuring experience that you would play with Pathfinder tabletop rules. Mm -hmm. The Emerald Spire is in Pathfinder Online. It's, it has a physical location in on the map. And um, in the beginning, I think it's going to be uh, an object of interest. You'll be able to find it at some point when we add it, and you'll be able to go look at it. Um, and then over time, I think we're going to add uh, Emerald Spire content um, to the Emerald Spire. Um, the challenge is that building all the stuff that goes inside of a structure is beyond the scope of the work we're currently doing. So we're not focusing right now on dungeon walls and, you know, all that stuff that you would find inside something like the Emerald Spire. Um, eventually, we'll get there, and uh, the Emerald Spire will probably become a pretty cool part of, of the world. Um, but in the beginning, it's going to be a landmark more than an adventuring location. All right, so we've got a couple questions in the chat room, and one of the most important ones to you probably is how do people get involved with the project if they miss the original Kickstarter? I mean, can they go to your website? Can they buy in now and try to get into the alpha when you have that minimum viable product? I yeah. mean, fortunately, I was an original backer. Um, I didn't like, you know, break the bank, but I gave you some money, so I'm looking forward to the <laughs> game. Right. Uh, what can they do to, to get in okay. to the Johnny Come Latelys? That is a great question uh, and perfectly timed. So uh, we are going to have a crowdfunding tool that will be associated with the game uh, kind of real soon, TM. Uh, it's being built by Paizo Publishing. Uh, Paizo has a really big website. They do a lot of e-commerce stuff. So for things like this, they are kind of our technological partner. And uh, we'd hope to have it ready by the end of the year, and it's a little bit behind schedule. But it's, uh, it's, it's kind of been through its testing phase, and it's about ready to be deployed. And when we roll it out, we'll announce it uh, through all of our, you know, our communications uh, channels. Um, and you'll be able to go to that tool and buy access to the game, uh, either to early enrollment or uh, to open enrollment, which will happen at some point past the end of early enrollment, um, similar to the way you could in the Kickstarter. Uh, there will be things that were in the Kickstarter that are not going to be made available uh, after the Kickstarter. So people who kickstarted us uh, are going to get some benefits that um, other people will will not be able to get access to. Um, the objective is kind of twofold. Um, so we have enough funding to get to the beginning of early enrollment, uh, and we're confident that we're going to make that. But our runway is very short, and our resources are very constrained. So uh, it would be difficult if we had to go later into 2014 before we started early enrollment. We'd like to get a little more runway just to give ourselves a little cushion. Uh, designing software is tough and estimates are hard. Uh, and we'd also like to add some more people. And if we added some more bodies to the staff, we would be able to add a few more features more rapidly and we'd be able to add some more content for some features that we're planning on adding uh, for early enrollment. We'd be able to add more content quicker. Uh, so our, our crowdfunding operation that we're going to run ourselves is not, uh, shouldn't be viewed as this will be the make or break on whether the game is produced or not. It's more about can we, uh, can we make our plan more secure and can we add more features to the stuff we're, we're going to be working on. Um, and I'm hopeful that we can. You know, our, uh, our kind of our watchword for all things Pathfinder Online is, uh, is under promise and over deliver. 
And uh, you know, we underpromised and we're overdelivering on the Kickstarter stuff. And we're going to do the same thing with our with our crowdfunding follow-on. So uh, we're not going out and telling people, you know, hey, we need to be like Chris Roberts and raise thirty million dollars. Uh, you know, we're going to be happy with all the money that we raise, and it will all be used constructively. Um, and I hope that there are a lot of people that would like to get on board. I, I get emails every day from people saying, hey, I missed the Kickstarter. You know, what do I do? Um, so I think there is definitely a demand. People are, are interested. Um, and you know, a year ago. When you were kickstarting, um, you know this was uh, this was a harder proposition to sell. Uh, you know, untested team, never made a computer game before as, as a company, um, and uh, you know MMOs are hard, and uh, kickstarting an MMO is weird. So I, I could definitely see how people would would say, you know, I'm going to just wait a while and see how much progress they make, and I hope that after showing people a year of progress. We are getting to the point now where there may be a lot of people who are saying, "Okay, well, this looks like it's really going to happen, and now I want to, you know, now I want to be a part of it." Um, and so, you know, I think there is potentially a really nice audience of people that will help us with our crowdfunding here as we go into the, kind of the last six months uh, before we start early enrollment. I think you guys started a little bit of a trend in 2013 with the MMO Kickstarters, and I think we're actually starting to see a little bit of fatigue on the yeah. uh, MMO Kickstarters at the start of 2014. But there was a number really. Interesting ideas that got launched off, so uh, it was good to see that happen. Uh, yeah. Do you actually have, or are you guys willing to share what you're kind of thinking, what a price point's going to be for the open enrollment, which would that be kind of equivalent of buying the game at that point? Yeah. So there's an open enrollment tier in the Kickstarter. Um, I think it was $30. It might have been 35 I think it was $30. Uh, and uh, I think that's the price point we're going to stick at for the time being. So that includes uh, a month of game time uh, and the game itself. So we're not going to charge you 60 bucks and then you know $15 on top of that. Um, that pricing is certainly subject to change. Okay. And uh, you know, over time, it, it probably will change. Uh, but that seems like a good place to start. Um, you know, I've looked at a lot of competitive products and a lot of Stuff that that's you know coming out um, that was either uh, you know run through Steam or run through Kickstarter, and that thirty dollars price point seems reasonable. So that's that's kind of what we're going to begin with. And then the, the so that's access to, to to open enrollment, which will happen you know sometime after early enrollment. Uh, so when we begin the the new crowdfunding uh, tool, um, the least expensive uh, early enrollment option is the same as it was for the Kickstarter. So it's the Crowdforger Pioneer and it's priced at 100 bucks. But the 100 bucks includes um, three months of game time, the game client, and uh, some other bits and pieces of things. I, I don't want to say what they are because I'll screw it up, but uh, you'll be able to see it on the website. So uh, there's a lot of value packed in that $100. Right. So we'll, I guess I got a question. Will there be able to be the alpha access for people supporting late? Yes. So we're going to continue to have the alpha tier. Um, and we may continue to have the alpha tier forever. So okay. uh, during, during the Kickstarter, we ran a promotion called the Daily Deals. And the idea was that um, every day there would be a daily deal uh, item that would be announced during the Kickstarter. And the daily deals are mostly cosmetic uh, items that are designed to be cute and interesting and cool, not mechanically superior. It's like you don't get the, you know, plus 10 Vorpal Sword from a daily deal. You get, you know, cool hat. Uh, and, uh, and it was an incentive to induce people to pledge before the last day of the Kickstarter, which is unfortunately a, a big Kickstarter trend now. A lot of people wait till the end before they pledge. So if you, if you, as soon as you pledged for the Kickstarter, you would get that day's daily deal and all the daily deals that were announced after it, but you would not get any of the daily deals that had been announced before the day that you pledged, unless you were an alpha backer. In which case, in addition to all the other benefits you get as an alpha backer, you would also get all of the daily deals regardless of what day you pledged. I think I got a bunch uh, of daily deals I don't know about sitting around yeah, somewhere. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so they'll all be coming. So... Uh, of course, people ask us, you know, how do I get the daily deals? I missed the Kickstarter. And we feel like it would be really unfair to all the people who backed us during the Kickstarter if we sold the daily deals or made the daily deals available, uh, you know, through some relatively trivial process. So yeah, we've kind of committed sense. to people and said, if you want to be an alpha backer, you know, you'll get all the daily deals. So, you know, for now and until such time as we decide that it's a bad idea, uh, that's how you get the daily deals is you become an alpha backer. And the alpha back. Uh, alpha backing package is a thousand bucks. In addition to the daily deals, you get uh, you get to play early enrollment for free. 
So you don't have to buy game time during early enrollment. So no matter how long early enrollment lasts, you're, you're in. Um, you also get to partake, participate in what we're called monster casting. So we have this idea that we're going to run some events where we let the players, uh, we let alpha backer players uh, play as the monsters. We think that'll be fun. Uh, we have no idea <laughs> how much fun, but we're going to experiment and find out. Um, and uh, the alpha backers will get, uh, will of course be in the actual alpha test itself. Um, I think what we're planning right now is that alpha backers are going to have uh, access to the alpha test server whenever the alpha test server is running. And occasionally we're going to do stress tests where we're going to invite uh, a larger number of people to come in for a day or a weekend, kind of like what Elder Scrolls has been doing to get ready for their launch. So, uh, you know, kind of seeing the alpha isn't going to require you to be an alpha tester, but if you want to be an, an alpha backer of the project, you'll, you'll basically have as much access to alpha as, as anybody else does. Um, and, you know, as, as somebody who, who contributes a thousand bucks to the project, um, you know, we're super, uh, we're super aware of that level of commitment, and we're going to make an effort to make sure that all of our alpha backers are really well treated and, um, you know, get, get the highest uh, degree of customer service and support that we possibly can offer those people. So, um, you know, all, all pigs are equal. Some pigs are a little bit more equal than others. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the alpha backers uh, are in that group. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get the fact that thousand bucks is a lot of money, but it, it's also going to be a pretty cool thing to be a part of. So, there you go. All right, Ryan. Well, thanks for your time. I'm really looking forward to it. I appreciate you coming and saying hello and answering some yeah. questions this evening. Cool. And uh, for those of you that are out there watching, if you want to make sure that you're up to date on when those uh, pledge tiers will actually be available for you to get in, I'm sure we'll have it all over MMORPG.com when it happens in a, what is it, Pathfinder.com is the blog yep. over at Piazzo. Yeah, you go to uh, Paizo.com or GobbleWorks.com. There you go. Yep, perfect. Awesome.